These three teens were brought to our show by their mothers because they're having sex in public. I had sex in school, park, I don't care. They're getting into fights. You got a problem with it? Step up and watch what happens. And they're doing drugs. One time I found weed in your backpack. She said, I'm not smoking it, I'm selling it. Lashana is out of control and she's only 14 years old. I do not know what to do. She'll go up to grown men, her bikini on her, body half -way. And we gave her a lie detector test. She thinks that you've had sex with one person. The lie detector determines. How many more men you gonna have sex How with? How many did you have sex when you was young? Imagine if your 15-year-old daughter was playing games with her friends like this. Who could use the most condoms in a week? I'm 15 years old. This is my world, my life. Shut up! Shut up! Her 14-year-old recently turned her attention to girls. You're now experimenting with all kinds of sex. Yeah. Will the teens stop having unprotected sex when they see this? A single mother at just 17 years old. I don't want to be no single mom. Oh. And a 16-year-old boy who never told his family that he might be the father. I ain't know how to handle the situation. Will this teen find her baby's father today? KJ? <laughs> These teens are going to find out what their future holds if they don't decide to change. You guys think that this can't happen to you? Can these young girls handle just one day in jail? Is this what they want? Their mothers desperately need our help. Wild teens confronted. Everyone, this is Rhonda. Welcome Rhonda to the show. Now, Rhonda. Rhonda has a 14-year-old daughter named Lashana. This is what Lashana thinks. She thinks it's cool to sneak out in the middle of the night, have sex and fist fights with other girls. That's what in fact, Lashana brags she's been in more than 60 street fights. One time, Rhonda physically tried to get in her daughter's way, and Lashana, the 14-year-old, sliced her mother's hand with a knife. Here's Rhonda's story. My 14-year-old daughter, Lashana, is so out of control, I do not know what to do. One day, my daughter, Lashana, grabbed me, and she pulled my shirt over my head, and I fell into a glass table. She treats me like an animal, and it's so violent, and it scares me. I don't take nobody, and if they got a problem with it, we could fight. I've been in over 60 fights, and if any bitch step up, guess what? I'm going to beat that because they don't love me. Shayna told me that she had sex with one person, but I believe it's more. I have sex wherever I want, when I want, and however I want to do it. You got a problem with it? Step up and watch what happens. My daughter is obsessed with trying to hide razors in her mouth. She's a big old crybaby. I do whatever I have to do to protect myself because she's not always there with me. I'm terrified because Shayna might end up pregnant in jail. And they might find her on the side of the road dead. And I can't take that. <laughs> so, let me set this up, Rhonda. Lashana wants to go out. You say no. She says, I'm going out. She, what happens at home? She starts cussing and calling me bit bitches and things like that. Oh. Will, she, will she put her hands on you? One time I was trying to go out and she wanted me to give her a cell phone that was mine and I refused to give it to her so she grabbed me and she pulled my clothes up over my shoulders and she me across the room, you know, and when I was falling across the room, I was trying not to fall into a glass table, and she didn't even care, and then she got on top of me, and then a bunch of people ran in, and she was talking about I was abusing her and stuff. And you got your hand sliced once? Yes, I, one time she had gotten smacked by someone, and she came in, and she just cut my hand, and uh, With a knife? it made me feel really bad. Yeah, because I don't want her, I didn't want her to go out there and cut no one because it could cause her a lot of problems. And she used to hide razor blades in her mouth? In her mouth, yeah. She wants to see everybody get their, get cut. She wants to cut everybody, even her own brother. And how about the sex? She said she had sex with one person. But you want to know? Yes, sir. You want to know the real reason? Yes, sir. You want to know the answers about the sex? Yes, sir. And we gave her a lie detector test. <laughs> Just like that all the time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, it's time to meet Lashana. Here's Lashana. Lashana, come on in. Lashana, why don't you listen 
do your money. Man, I do listen to her as the same thing that I don't agree with. What does she say? What do you mean that you don't? What she's trying to do is protect you. Don't you Man, understand whatever. that? So what? So what? All you get. Shut up. So what? It don't matter, dog. They Why doesn't it matter? Me. Why doesn't it, it does matter? matter. Don't go ahead. Let nothing tell me. Don't go ahead. 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 Whatever, and you treat me like okay. this and talk okay. to me like yeah. that. Okay, okay, mom. Tell them, tell them this. No, the I'm telling you. Yeah. I'm on yeah. TV. I'm yeah. telling you. Yeah. I'm on yeah. 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 Hey, Lashane, let me ask you this. What would you rather do? Would you rather fight or have sex? I do both. Okay. your life. Guess yeah, how what? would you say something like say that? How do you feel? That's what you're respecting yourself. Lashana, at 14 years old, Lashana, it's not your life. It's your mother's life. It's those people around you. No, it's not. It's my life. No, it's my life. What is it talking about? And that's about? what it's bothers me is she really believes it's her life. And it's not her life because she'll go up to any man. She don't care who it is. She'll threaten them, grown men, and she'll say whatever she want to say to them. shut up talking to me. If he don't know me, he ain't got no business telling me nothing. <laughs> Shayna don't understand. She be walking around with her bikini on and her body half on. But she be she 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 be walking around like that. Ain't none of y'all out here talking. She be walking around like that, but she be acting like they shouldn't look. But of course they gonna look. But you buy it. I buy it because I thought you was gonna look nice in it. Okay, then don't buy it if you think I don't look right in it. But you're supposed to wear all the parts, not just the two. Okay, it's a bikini. What you expect? It's supposed to be a top, Shayna. No, it's not. Do you have friends? I'm Dolo. Huh? I'm Dolo. What does that mean? I, I don't I don't ride with nobody. I stay by myself. So you don't have friends? I have them, but I just don't I don't really socialize with people. Why? Because I don't. Why? Because I got a fly mouth and I know it. Maybe you don't socialize with them because they don't want to. She wanna, wanna be hang with, with people that sell drugs because they got money and gang in and shut all up, of that. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. I ain't lying about it. Shut up. How do you end up how do you end up slicing your mother's hand? She tried to, she shouldn't have grabbed it. She grabbed the knife. I didn't cut her. She grabbed but it. But then when I had blood all over me, she didn't me, want you, you to you do any harm to, stop. to other Why people. Why blood on my clothes? Because I was trying to keep you from giving up your whole life. Well, that was your fault. That was your fault. You shouldn't have grabbed me. Then after I had blood all over me, after I had blood all over me, she was running all outside from the police and blood was, was all funny. on me. She was dumping, was dump, it dunking was all funny. in front of the car. That's funny. not funny. It was funny at the time. It wasn't funny when, when your police, mother gets her hands sliced. Yeah. Then when the police came and handcuffed her and threw her on the ground, they felt like they started telling people in the neighborhood they couldn't wait till she did something else because she had a knock hey, mouth. Yeah. I'm Lashana. trying to save you. you think it's I cool? love you. Hey. Yeah. Lashana. You think it's cool having sex in an abandoned apartment building? You think that's cool? I, I, I was high tonight. You were high. Mm -hmm. So you blame that on that. Well, guess what? You talk about you don't know me and I can do anything I want. I you, can you, always, you can always say no to getting high. You said you didn't You know that, Lashana? You can say no to getting high. If you, if you say nobody can tell you what to do, you can say no to getting high. Why don't you say no to getting and high? And having no sex. That's your body. Your when you give says, your body to somebody else, well, Shana, your right. mother says she thinks that you've had sex with one person. Do you want to tell her anything more right now before I read this lot? And I already told her. What? I already told her about the dudes I had sex How with, many? so it don't matter. How many? It was three of them. Three. Here's the lie detector. Here's the lie detector. You were asked if when you sneak out in the middle of the night, are you going to meet up with guys to have sex with? You said no. The lie detector determined that was a lie. <laughs> you were asked how many boys you've had sex intercourse with. You admitted to two. You told your mother three. The lie detector test determined you've had sex with more than four boys. <laughs> you were asked if you ever had a pregnancy scare. You said no. The lie detector determined that was a lie. That's messed up. That and I, my love don't mean nothing to you then. So what do you suggest that I do to help you? Okay, you
So do you got anything it's that you, you got any diseases right Did now? Did anybody know do I don't? Any, how do you know? I already know, Mama. We've we, we, we been to the doctor. How I do you know? Tried. I ain't never tested you for that. Okay, but you got four different baby daddies. Is anybody that's anything about right. that? No, Is anybody that's right. Is anybody telling you anything about that? So get out of my face with that. So because I got four different baby so daddies, you're going to have sex with four different men? How you going to put that on me? So how many more men you going to have sex how many with? How many more? How many did you have sex with when you was young? Shane. Are you gonna be there here this many years? I'm here. I'm 47. You're 14. You gonna make it here? I'm supposed to be here. Hey, guess what? This is the bottom line. I'm here today to tell you to save yourself. And God saves me. And he can save you, but if you don't choose it. We'll be back right after this. We'll be right back. Imagine if your 15-year-old daughter was playing games with her friends like this. Who could use the most condoms in a week? 15 years old. This is my world, my life. Shut up! Shut up! Will the teen stop having unprotected sex when they see this? A single mother at just 17 years old. I don't want to be no single mom. Oh. <laughs> and a 16-year-old boy who never told his family that he might be the father. I ain't know how to handle the situation. Will <laughs> this teen find her baby's father today? KJ? <laughs> Their mothers desperately need our help. Wild teens confronted. Everyone, this is Shannon. Welcome Shannon to the show. Now, now we all know that kids like to play games. But imagine if your 15-year-old daughter's idea of a fun game was competing with her friend to see who could use the most condoms in a week. That's what Shannon has to deal with. Her 15-year-old daughter, Tiana, is sexually out of control. You see, Tiana lost her virginity at the age of 12. Did it at the public park and the school playground. This is what Shannon has to deal with. I'm 15 years old. This is my world, my life. I'll live it however I want to live it. I get in trouble every day, and I'm tired of my mom getting in my face about it. I've been in over 35. My 15-year-old daughter is destroying her life, and I don't know what to do anymore. I had sex in some crazy places. School, park, I don't care. I even had sex with two guys at the same time, but I'm more into the one-on-one -on -one thing. Anna's already had two pregnancy scares, and I'm scared she's gonna have another one. Pregnancy scared? I wasn't scared. I would have loved to have a baby then. Tiana smokes cigarettes, she drinks, and smokes weed. I've seen her high over a hundred times. I only smoke weed one time a day. I go into my own little world and ignore my mom, and that's the best part. I am so scared for my daughter's life. My biggest fear is that she's gonna wind up dead someday. How did it get like this? I don't know. She was a perfect little girl and just all of a sudden turned out to be crazy. How do you find out that she has sex in public places? Um, friends had, it was rumors going around. She had told one friend that didn't think it would say anything and it got around and got to me and that's how I found out. Guess who Tiana's new best friend is? Oh. Right over there. So Tiana goes out and has Whatever. sex in the park. In the park. All kinds of people around. Right? And then and then they started, she and her friend started laughing about something. What were they laughing about? Um, they were laughing about the condoms, who can use the most condoms in a week. And it's just Well, crazy. how many guys has she been with? I know of three or four. I don't know if there's oh, more, me, but I just know there is. What's the point of crying so much, what? though? Yeah, what? Stop crying, though. Why did you tell her to stop? Why? Yeah. How dare you tell her to stop crying? She's crying because she but loves her up. daughter. You understand? Okay, look, but that's her. You're not talking like that. I thought you cared about your son. Yeah, no, sit down and Stop that. Stop that. Stop that. Sit down, though. You Stop that. 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 Stop that.
Oh, we lay standing over you. You guys are laying in a casket. Okay. Okay. Sit down. Right. Sit down. Shannon, when your daughter was 12, she had sex. Yeah. 12. I told her, I was like, it's not a cute thing, you out there doing, having sex at 12 years old. You want to have sex with somebody when you're older that you can, you know, love somebody. It's a special thing. What did she do on Halloween? Um, she had told me on Halloween, she came up to me when we were at the store and said, guess what, Mom? And I said, what? And she's like, I had sex with this 19-year-old that she's known. 19-year-old. Oh, boy, I can't wait to meet her. And LaShana, of course, wants her new best friend out here on the set. Here's Tiana. Tiana, come on out. Here she is. Are you an exhibitionist? No. You know what an exhibitionist is? No. The exhibitionist is like, they like to go around in public places and demonstrate what they're about. So you like to go around in public places and have sex. Is that right? So what? You think that's so? cool? That's cool. So? It's my life. I can live what oh, I want to live. Julia. Obviously, clearly. I want to I, I gotta talk to you about them. We're in the middle of the night. Either I go kick it with my friends to drink or smoke, or I go meet with some boys. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can block out your world. Do you think you can block out your frustrations by going and get high? You yep. think you think that that's you know what that is? That's copping out of life. You understand? You're taking a cop out. <laughs> that means that means that you don't want to deal with life. You want to put life in, a, in, in its world and you in your own little world. Guess what? That's not the way it is. Tiana, I, I really don't think you want to be where you are. I don't think you want to be there. I think you want to be. Just and Lashana, the way we want no, to. no, no, no. No, we Lashana. just want to be able to do oh, what we want to do. Let him talk. This is his show. Exactly. Thank you very much. Hey, I mean, we're now, you. No, no, guess Jay's, what? No, Jay's. but guess what? Guess what? You can't be that selfish. You have no right to be that selfish. You have a family. They care about you. And you should care that they care. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I mean, I mean, I feel like, I feel like if I want to do that, I can do that because that's how I take away. You ever put your hands on your mother? I slapped her. You slapped your mother. Why would you do that? Because she didn't think I was going to do it, so I did it. <laughs> what were you doing? What What were you doing that your mother got mad at you? What were I you doing? I asked her for a cigarette, and she wouldn't give it to oh, me. Oh, she wouldn't give you a cigarette. <laughs> so you slapped her. Yep. We'll be right back after this. Oh, these are a couple of beauties today. We'll be back with a third one after this. Her 14-year-old recently turned her attention to girls. You're now experimenting with all kinds of sex. Yeah. Will the teen stop having unprotected sex when they see this? A single mother at just 17 years old. I don't want to be no single mom. Oh. <laughs> and a 16-year-old boy who never told his family that he might be the father. I didn't know how to handle the situation. Will this teen find her baby's father today? KJ? <laughs> Their mothers desperately need our help. Wild teens confronted. Everybody, welcome Karen to the show. Here's Karen. <laughs> now, <laughs> Karen has a 14-year-old daughter named Amber. But Amber is headed down a dangerous road of sex and violence. You see, her 14-year-old is sexually active and already is known for having a bad reputation around town. But 
Amber's not ashamed of that. You see, Amber admits having sex with guys, and recently Amber says she's turned her attention to girls. Wow. My daughter Amber is 14 years old. She's already drinking, doing drugs, and having sex. She won't talk to me about it. I'm just scared for her. I feel like I'm at my wit's end. I can't tell you how many times I go to work crying and my coworkers are like, they just are praying for me. What I think about when I'm crying with Amber is that I lost my little girl and I don't know how to get her back. My daughter Amber means the world to me. I miss the little girl that she was. I really need help before it's too late. Look at that face. Now, you've called the cops 10 times on her. Or more. Why, what'd she do? Um, I've called the cops on her many times. Running away. One time I found weed in her backpack and she told me, don't worry, mom. She said, I'm not smoking it, I'm selling it. Is that what she said? Now, I just said about this sex life. She doesn't know whether she wants to be with boys or girls, does she? No. She did like guys, and now she's in love with a girl named Her Um. And by the way, Amber's 14. 14. This other girl is 18. She just turned 18. Who's that? That's my baby. You know, when she was 12, you saw a video of her, right? I did. What was she doing? There was a videotape of her and a bunch of other people smoking weed. Oh. At 12. I want to find out what you're doing. <laughs> Amber, 14. Here's Amber. That's the first nice demonstration of anything. Tiana, your mother a hug? No. No? <laughs> Love your mother. Yeah. So why do you have so much trouble? Why I don't do you... mean to. Huh? I don't mean to get so much trouble. You don't mean to. It just happens. Well, but the things you do, yeah. I mean, they automatically, they provoke this yeah. kind of reaction with your mother. But I can't change the things I do. Well, yeah, you can. I can, but not, not all at once. Not all at once? Mm -hmm. So you would like to change some things? Some things, yeah. Well, yeah. Give, me, give me one thing you'd like to change. Uh, not to make my mom cry. At 14, we would hope that girls haven't had sex. You not only have had sex, you're now experimenting with all kinds of sex, right? Yeah. You think about your actions before you do them? Yeah, sometimes I think it afterward, but I'm, sometimes I know that I made a mistake. Wow. We'll be back. These teens are going to find out what their future holds if they don't decide to change. She's a teenage girl who almost lost it all. I don't want to see you go through what I went through, okay? Do you hear me? Will the teens stop having unprotected sex when they see this? A single mother at just 17 years old. I don't want to be no single mom. Oh. <laughs> and a 16-year-old boy who never told his family that he might be the father. I didn't know how to handle the situation. Will <laughs> this teen find her baby's father today? KJ? <laughs> Their mothers desperately need our help. Wild teens confronted. So, the time has come for us to try to turn around these kids who are clearly hell-bent on destroying their future. Now, I have a guest. I'm going to bring a guest out here. Her name is Jamie. And Jamie is here to share with us her shockingly painful story. You see, she's a teenage girl who almost lost it all, including her life. Watch. At just 12 years old, Jamie ran away from home and began living an out-of-control life that included sex, drugs, and much older men. I left home when I was 12 years old and moved in with my 29-year-old boyfriend. We would have sex, drink liquor, and get high. Everything was great as long as I did what he said. 
But things took a frightening turn when Jamie said no to the man who supposedly loved her. The first time that I told my boyfriend that I didn't want to have sex, he raped me. I was only 13 years old. After that, he put a lock on the front door and boarded up the front windows. And then he started beating me on a regular basis. He kicked me in my ribs 36 times and dumped me from the hospital like I was just a piece of trash. Trapped in the world she had created, Jamie became addicted to drugs and often moved from place to place. When I was 15 years old, I was doing drugs before I always got high with He told me that I was tired just to go lay down in his room on his bed. I woke up to finding his friend on me being raped again. At 17 years old, Jamie was desperate to get off the streets. So she decided to return home. But what would happen next would change her life forever. I was crying walking home. And this man pulled it aside and asked me if I needed a ride. When I told him which way to go, he didn't go that way. And then I knew I was in trouble. He pulled into the lot and pulled out a gun. He fired it up the window and told me, bitch, if you don't do what I tell you to do, you're going to die. I believed him and then he raped me. I never thought anything like this could happen to me when I was young, but it did. I had to live with those memories of those years for the rest of my life. Everybody, please welcome Jamie. Here's Jamie. So, hearing that story, hearing your story again, you get upset just I, uh, Retelling it. I do, because it's something I'm living for the rest of my life. There is a particular girl here you already have a connection with, isn't it? Yeah. Which one? Tiana. My Tiana niece. is your niece. Tiana's your niece. What do you want to tell her right now? Tiana, you need to change. I don't want to see you go through what I went through, okay? I don't want you to be a victim. Do you hear me? Tiana, it's not too late, all right? Do you hear me? Now we have one more person backstage that is going to try to talk some sense into these wild teen girls. Our special ops expert, Dave Vitale, here's Dave. tough no more. You got nothing to say. You do not look as tough as you did when you were running your lip backstage and out here to this audience. Now your reality check is coming today. And you play with me, I'm going to play back. Remember, look at me. Now you said people hide behind their badges, right? Is that what you've been out here running your lip about? Here's my badge, sweetheart. I'm not hiding behind mine. What do you got to say to me? Disrespect your mother? You want to disrespect? Don't you dare put a smirk on your face. I don't want to see a smirk on your face again for the rest of the day. You understand me? Now, you think you're going to come out here and be all nice and be all cute and this and that and hug your mother because you think that you're going to be all sweet and nice now? You should have thought of that before you ended up with your butt here on this stage. So, what are you going to do with these people, Dave? I want all you girls to get up. I want every one of you to stand right, up. Stand up, stand please. Up. Amber, Deanna. Stand up. Okay. Stand up. Turn and look at your mother. Turn and look at your mother. I want you to say goodbye to her, because it's going to be a while before you see him again, so I'm taking you to Mammoth County Correctional Facility. OK. So we're going out here, all right? Thank you very Thank you. much, everybody. Let's go, girls. Thank you very Let's much. Let's go. We'll be back right after this. Thank you. These teens are going to find out what their future holds if they don't decide to change. You guys think that this can't happen to you? Can these young girls handle just one day in jail? This is only mom. Will the teens stop having unprotected sex when they see this? A single mother at just 17 years old. I don't want to be no single mom. Oh. And a 16-year-old boy who never told his family that he might be the father. I ain't know how to handle the situation. Will <laughs> this teen find her baby's father today? KJ?
Their mothers desperately need our help. Wild teens confronted. Everybody welcome Shanice to the show. She's very scary. Why are you so scared? Because I'm here to take a paternity test for my son to prove to a boy named KJ that he's the father. Okay. This is her baby, by the way, her baby son, Montrell. At 17, she put her dreams of graduating high school and becoming a registered nurse on hold because of this guy, 16-year-old KJ. <laughs> See, Shanice said she didn't plan on having a baby with but now that he's here, KJ needs to step up and be a dad, you see? <laughs> Shanice believes the reason that KJ isn't owning up to his responsibilities is because of his family, and particularly his grandmother, Audrey. Take a look at the story. It's hard being a 17-year-old single mother, and it's even harder being a single mother without the baby father. KJ kept me and the baby hidden from his family for a whole year. Now they're denying the baby and making this sound it's my fault, it's KJ's fault that he kept the baby a secret. His grandmama said he can't help me with the baby because he has to go to school. Well, I want him to go to school and become a nurse. I'm going to do all that and be a good mother, and he should be able to do the same too. KJ should be a man and not a boy. He should stop listening to his grandmother and do what's right for our baby. This test is big. I don't want to be no single mama for everyone that's not here. Yes, y'all, please don't have a baby, y'all, because you have to put in so much. Oh, oh. <laughs> now. What happened when he told him you were pregnant? He told me to get an abortion because he didn't want his family to find out. What did his family say? Well, I got a call from his grandmother, and she called me, and she said, my baby doesn't look like him. His grandmother is here. You know that? Yes. Audrey? Hi, Audrey. How are you? Hi, Mari. How are you? Nice to see you. You think that child's your grandbaby? Mari, I really can't say one way or the other. I'm happy that we found out about this. Uh, my grandson has been buying Pampers with the allowance that I gave him. My grandson's not a deadbeat. We're not a deadbeat family. I told you over the phone. I never... When I spoke with you over the phone, I told you, I said, let's be sure with the DNA test. Yeah. Okay. So and if this son but turns out to be yeah. my great-grandson, I would assist you so you can go to school and make something out of yourself. So let's find out what your grandson has. I'd like to know today. Thank you. Take a look. It's a possibility that I'm the father of this child, and it's a possibility that I'm not. I was only 14 when she first told me she was pregnant, and my first thought was, I'm not ready for a child right now. I know I was wrong for hiding Shanice and the baby from my family, but I was young, and I didn't know how to deal with the situation at the time. My grandma had nothing to do with this situation. If it's my child, I'm gonna take care of my responsibility. Shanice, if this is not my child, you have no reason to contact me whatsoever. Everybody, welcome KJ to the show. Here's KJ. Hi, KJ, how are you? Nice to see you. Welcome. Come on over here. All right, so this is what I get out of this, KJ, without even talking to you. This was a terrible mistake, right? Yeah, they're right. If you're the father, you're prepared to take care of that baby. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, I'm going to my responsibility. <laughs> okay, Audrey, we're going to find out right now. In the case of 11-month-old Montrell, KJ, you are not. Listen, listen, it's okay. It's 
okay. It's okay. It's so funny. It's, it's okay. okay. We're not okay. These teens are going to find out what their future holds if they don't decide to change. You guys think that this can't happen to you? Can these young girls handle just one day in jail? This will be mom. Their mothers desperately need our help. Wild teens confronted. These three teens were brought to our show by their mothers because they were getting into fights. I've been in over 60 fights, and if any bitch step up, I'm gonna beat their ass. Doing drugs. One time I found weed in your backpack. She said, I'm not smoking it, I'm selling it. And having sex in public. I have sex in some crazy places. School, park, I don't care. To show these young teens exactly what will happen if they continue this out of control behavior. Special Ops expert Dave Vitale brought these girls straight to jail. You are now inmates of the Mammoth County Correctional Facility and you will be addressed as such. Do you understand me? Yes, sir. Let's go. Once inside, the teens were marked single file through the booking area, up the stairwells, and through maximum security corridors. Your freedoms are now gone. They were led directly to where female inmates are locked up under supervision 23 hours a day. These inmates were going to try to scare these teens straight and make them realize that this is the last place they would ever want to end up. Don't you guys think that Why this can't happen to you? Happen you? Not, you won't be somebody else's chick up in here. Why don't you tell them about the condom game that you had with your girlfriend to see how many people, how many condoms you could use in a week? Wow. wow. I'm here. You don't want to be in here. Wipe that smirk off your face. You're the one who hit your mother. Am I right? She feeds you, she clothes you, she bathed you, and you've got the audacity to actually put your hands on your mother. Do you love your mother? Do you want her here with you now? She cannot come in here. She's not allowed to come in here. What you are doing and the way that you're going in this road of the life that you're choosing is going to end up two places, in here or in a box. That's where you're going to end up. Even though the inmates were with the teens for only a short time, these young girls were incredibly affected. It's okay. It's all right. If you could tell your mother something, she's going to be watching this tape. What do you want to tell your mother? <laughs> that I'm sorry for everything I did to her, and I need to learn how to respect her and start giving her attitude. What else do you need to learn? <laughs> I need to learn how to respect myself and stop doing the things I'm doing. We're doing this for you. The team's trip to jail is not over. Wait until they see what it feels like to be locked alone in a cell. I'm scared it won't be more. Their mothers desperately need our help. Wild teens confronted. After an unforgettable meeting with the female inmates, Dave Vitale was going to reinforce how important it is for these teens to change by having them spend time locked up in a cold, cramped jail cell. I'm scared it won't be more. I just want to grow up and finish school and get a good job. I promise I won't do anything bad no more. I just want me more. Listen to me, you're a kid. You're allowed to make a mistake, all right? But as long as you learn from it, it's not a mistake. It's a learning experience. You can change. Everything's going to change today. There's no reason to think that you cannot turn your life around, ever. You can be whatever you want to be. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter if you have money, you don't have money. It means absolutely nothing. Mom, I want to change. Do you mean it? I do. What do you want to change, honey? I want to change my attitude and my behavior. It's going to be OK, OK? It looks like the message was reaching all of the teens. I don't want to end up here. And we were all happy to see a complete attitude change in the way these young girls were dealing with their mothers. I'm sorry for treating you like and I promise you I'm going to change. I think she woke up. I I'm think glad. she had a reality check pretty quick. I'm sorry, I'll change. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to change everything, stop doing what I'm doing, and hopefully we can build a better relationship. I can't make it without you. I really can't. Okay? I love you. We sincerely wish these teens and their families the best of luck. Until next time, America.
went nuts. <laughs> no, I'm not talking about New Year's Eve. I'm talking about the top 10 horror guests of 2010. <laughs> Who will be voted number one? In 2010, there were thousands of outrageous stories. I can't rip my clothes off and stole my virginity. I got 11 to it tomorrow. Some people heard you are the father. And some people heard you are not. There were lie detector results. I do nothing! You I swear! swear. Yeah. Sex secrets exposed. Oh, I didn't have to know that. He was texting me. Get away from me! Get away from me! Don't touch me! Don't touch me! Get off of me! Get off of me! It's over! And even a special guest host. But out of the million moments of unforgettable drama, <laughs> who will be crowned the number one guest of 2010? The 2010 Top 10 Countdown starts now. I can't hear myself talk. 2010 has been a wild year on Mari, and today we're counting down the top 10 guests of 2010. Who is going to be number one? Because starting at number 10 is Danny. Now, when we first met Danny in 2009, he came here with his parents to find out if his wife, Sylvia, cheated on him and had a baby with another man. So, <laughs> for, fortunately for Danny, Sylvia didn't cheat, and her baby was his, but... A year later, Danny returned, not with Sylvia, but with a new woman named Megan. Now, this time, Megan believed Danny was cheating, and she wasn't alone. Megan's mom, Jessica, was hell-bent on proving that Danny was no good. Coming in at number 10. You love Danny? With all my heart, Maury. What'd you find in his pocket? I found the condom wrapper. Where did he say that condom wrapper came he from? He said he let a friend borrow his pair of pants. <laughs> you know what you're doing now. You shut up, Jessica. Yo, you shut up. You make me, you idiot. I will make you. I know what it's like having parents in your business. It ruins your relationship. You know I love you. I care about you every day. I know. This is your mother, Jessica, is going to get out. She's going to get out today. So it was time to meet Jessica and hear the results. Out no, of our lives. No, 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 Jessica, no, get out. Get out. No, no, no. Why are you involved in their relationship? That girl calls me crying about the that this man does. Why wouldn't I get involved more? When Megan found an open condom wrapper in your pocket, did you use the condom to have sexual intercourse with another woman? You said no. That was a lie. Oh, what? What? I want to hear you when he disappears for walks, is he having intercourse with another woman? He said no. That was a lie. What am I talking about? During his relationship with Megan, how many times has he had sexual intercourse with another woman? He said none. That was a lie more than five times. Me. Mom, Dad, I, I told, told you, you stop. I told you stop. I told you stop. Oh, what's up, little people? But I love you, and I'm so sorry. So the question is, who did Megan go home with, her mom or Danny? Hi, Maury. My heart was broken when I found out Danny had cheated on me, but... She took me back, and I came clean about cheating, and I promised I would 
never do anything again to hurt her. As for my mother, she's not too happy about me and Danny, but she stays out of a relationship. I thought we had gotten rid of Danny for good, but if he messes up and breaks her heart, I will tear half of Texas down behind that child. Thanks, Maury, for helping us out again. I believe she could handle half of Texas. Anyway, number nine on the countdown is a woman named Rebecca. Now, after catching her best friend, Tanya, sneaking into her home in the middle of the night with a bag of lingerie, oh. Rebecca was convinced Tanya was having an affair with her fiance, Robert. Watch. Come on in, number nine. I was laying in the bed like on a Friday night, and I get a knock on the door at two o'clock in the morning. And Robert jumps up. I go over to the door, and do you know this tramp had the nerve to show up with this red lingerie? Who's that? Man? This is your best friend. Oh, she's a tramp. She's known for it. She's known for it. Before this occurred, there were 10, 15 messages on his phone. She's texting him. She texted Robert. I would never sleep with Robert. I believe that Robert is cheating with any and every woman he can get, but it's not me. You wouldn't do anything oh, to your best Mar friend. Yeah. This girl is crazy. Really? You're crazy. We flirt all the time. And I'm like, what are you playing with? Yeah. So Rebecca wanted Robert to take a lie detector test, but Robert, he had another idea. He decided to reveal three incredible secrets instead. Why? Rebecca, I done slept with over four women and I had sex over 200 times. <laughs> Here's the second secret. I believe that I have another woman pregnant. How do you do this to me? Here's a third secret. I must confess, I've had sex with your best friend, Tommy, over 50 times. I'm sorry. Don't touch me. You need to not lie to her. Oh, my God. <laughs> so... Rebecca's best friend, Tanya, claimed Robert was lying about the so-called affair, so we gave Tanya a lie detector test to uncover the truth. We yeah. asked you, Tanya, the Don't night you showed yourself. up at Rebecca's house at 2 a.m. with a bag of lingerie, was it because you intended to have sex with Robert? You said no, that was a lie. <laughs> During Robert's relationship with Rebecca, have you ever had sex with Robert? You said no, that was a lie over 50 times. How could you guys do this to me? Get away from me! Get away! Please. You got to have each other. So, what's the update? Take a look at this, everyone. Marty, after the show, I dumped that cheating dog, Robert. So soon after that, I found out that I was pregnant. He keeps calling and begging me to come back, but I just can't do it because I'm hearing rumors that they are sleeping together again. I refuse to take Robert back until I get another lie detector test. I guess I'll see you in 2011. All right, number eight, James and Nikki. When we first met James, he came here praying a DNA test would prove that he was the biological father of all three of his kids. You see, every time his wife Nikki got pregnant, she cheated. A secret she never planned on revealing until James's sister Ruby exposed the truth. What? Coming in at number eight. Woo! My world came shattering down when my sister Ruby told me that my wife cheated on me three times, and all three of these kids may not be mine. Are you upset that she cheated, or are you upset with the possibility that these kids might not be mine? I'm more pissed about the kids not being mine. My marriage is really messed up, and it's all because of my husband's dumbass sister, Ruby. I know that all three of my babies are James's. <laughs> If it wasn't for Ruby, Ruby, you would have taken this to your grave that you cheated on him. If it wasn't what? for Ruby, yes, oh, here's you because you couldn't keep your damn legs going. <laughs> the results were in when it comes to three year old Mikayla. James, you are the father. Yeah! 
When it comes to two-year-old Taya James, you are the boss. When it comes to one-year-old Kaylee James, you are the boss. Okay. Although the kids were his, after the show, James refused to take Nikki back until she took a lie detector test. However, instead of taking the test, Nikki decided to come clean. You have three secrets you wanted to reveal to James, right? Yes. My first secret is, you know, on the first show, I told you I only three, cheated on you three times. I've actually cheated on you over 50. <laughs> My second secret is I just ended a year-long relationship just six days ago. My third secret is that it's with one of your friends. I'm just going to clean and start over. Would you start a relationship with a woman whose legs are like a revolving door? Let's go, guys. There's obviously a number right there. It go, bro. See, guys, bro. Okay, so when we last spoke to James, he said he just couldn't forgive his wife and he filed for divorce. But since that update, we haven't been able to reach any of them. So, James, Nikki, we wish you a healthy, happy New Year. And we'll have more from the countdown right after. In 2010, there were thousands of outrageous stories. I got a baby! What you got? Thousands of shocking results. You don't want to marry me? Don't! 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 And a million moments of unforgettable drama. <laughs> but who will be crowned the number one guest of 2010? <laughs> the incredible answer is coming up. Who will be crowned the number one guest of 2010? The incredible answer is coming up. Okay. The new year by counting down the top 10 most memorable guests of 2010. Now, before we get back to the countdown, you know, we have to hand out uh, a first uh, honorable mention of the year. Now, I wonder if you remember this couple 21 year old Chris and his 41 year old girlfriend Brenda. Now, they claim they were madly in love. But Brenda's mom, Pam, was convinced Chris was cheating and determined to break them up. Watch. I've loved Brenda since the day I set eyes on her. We've got the best sex life for 21 year old man could ask for. Although I'm 21 and he's 21, we tend to keep it spicy in the bedroom. I've role playing, private dancing, blindfolds. My mom refuses to accept my relationship with Chris. But he's not going anywhere. Why does my audience get upset at this? I don't know. I look at that and I see two happy people. You need to open your eyes. I don't even understand why she's using you. Her. I'm 41 years old and I'm old enough to make my own choices. My daughter being used by a 21 year old baby. Brenda needs to date someone her own age. Excuse me. I am so tired of you taking advantage of my daughter. You know, I don't take advantage of her at all. Have you ever had sexual contact of any kind with anyone other than Brenda? You said no. You're telling the truth. No, 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 no. So, everybody, what's the update? Take a look at this. Hi, Maury. As you can see, Chris and I are still together, and we owe it all to you. With your help, I was finally able to prove to Pam that I truly love Brenda, and that I'm not just using her. My mother is finally accepting our relationship. We're even going on a Mexican cruise over the holidays. I can't wait to bring in the new year with my girl. Maury, you have a safe and happy new year. Bye. Bye. All right, back to the countdown. Number seven, a young mom named Kayla. Now, after getting pregnant while she was still in high school, Kayla came to the show furious that a 19-year-old named Chris was denying their daughter. Why? 
Coming in at number seven. I've known Christopher since the second grade, and he's grown up to be nothing but a deadbeat who'd rather skateboard than take care of his baby. I hate you so much, you don't even understand that I had to bring you to this show. Kale's the type of skis that's been obsessed with me since day one and won't get out of my life. I'm not taking responsibility for this baby when I know this bitch has been sleeping all over town. That is the congregation of our whole town. Chris, you are not. I'm from Abraham. So, after the shock wore off, Kayla came back to the show with a new man named Josh. A, a man she says made her so furious she started dating girls. Are you okay? No, I am irate. I want these test results. No. What happened? I called him literally when I got Josh? back stage for yeah. this. We were going to be together and life was going to be perfect. Right. And then what happened? I couldn't take it. So I broke up with him for a girl. And that's why I have on my game. Liar. Liar. After seeing Kayla on the last show, I want to make sure what happened to Chris doesn't happen to me. You think you're the father? Or yeah, you're... I could be a possibility, but there's another guy, too. I heard no, no, Josh. Let me tell you. Shut no, up. No, no, do not even tell me to shut up. Josh, come on. You are the yeah. father. I told you, and uh, to your uh, mom and your family, I told you. So, a after the show, you know, things were going so well for Kayla, she stopped dating girls, and she started dating Josh again. In fact, they were supposed to come here today as one big happy family, but they never got on the plane. Right before they were supposed to leave, we got an angry phone call from Josh. Here's the update. Maury, after the show, Kayla stopped dating women and started dating me. We tried to make it work out as a family until I discovered she was cheating on me again. Even though Kayla and I couldn't work it out, Brianna still remains my number one priority. I'm excited to bring in the New Year's with my daughter. I couldn't ask for a better date. Thanks to you, I'm able to spend the holidays with her now. From us to you, Happy New Year. Stand up guy, Josh. We wish you all the best in the New Year, Josh and Kayla for that matter. Now, we're going to move on to number six on the countdown. She appeared on the show actually a year ago in 2009. She became a YouTube sensation. I'm talking about Alicia, because Alicia suspected her best friend, Dominique, was seducing her boyfriend with her special recipe for chicken tetrazzini. Remember this? Coming in at number six. Me and Paul first got together. Dominique couldn't stand Paul, but now she's coming to my house cooking them chicken tetrazzini. If I find out that Dominique and Paul are sleeping together, Dominique, our friendship is over, and Paul is out the door. You think he has won him over with chicken I don't know what she do with the chicken tetrazzini, but Paul loves it. How far you all been going together? Me and Paul been together four long years. Me and Dominique been best friends for seven years. What's he say about that? He denies it to the police. We tried to give Paul a lie detector test. Mm -hmm. Instead, he wanted to reveal some secrets. First, I have to tell you that I cheated on you and slept with one of my ex-girlfriends. I slept with one of your family members three times, and the last time was just a month ago. Finally, I slept with Dominique one time. That is my best friend! After that show, Alicia left Paul, but, <laughs> but she remained friends with Dominique. <laughs> so imagine our surprise when this year, 2010, Alicia returned dating Paul, <laughs> once again suspecting he was doing her wrong. Watch. If he is cheating on me today, Maury, Paul is out the door, and that's real. When he spoke to Paul, he had two secrets that he wanted to come. 
first secret is I've been cheating on you with three women. My second secret is I've been sleeping with Dominique again. Be with now. I want to be with Dominique. Whoa! I want nothing to do with Pop. This house supposed to be supporting me. Dominique, and she up here with you. Y'all sleeping together. Let me tell you something. After the day, when we get on this plane, Pop, I can guarantee you, you strutting your ass to the gutter. <laughs> And the update is, she wasn't taking it back this time. She left Paul. She says it's just not for now. It is forever. Yeah! We'll have more from the countdown right after this. In 2010, there were thousands of outrageous stories. <laughs> Thousands of shocking results. I want answers! And a million moments of unforgettable drama. <laughs> but who will be crowned the number one guest of 2010? The incredible answer is coming up. Who will be crowned the number one guest of 2010? The incredible answer is coming up. Now, talking about family drama, number five on the countdown. It involved an irate grandmother named Gail. <laughs> Gail was convinced her son Ronald's girlfriend, Antoinette, was pinning two children on him that were not his kids. I'm Coming in at number, number five. five. <laughs> Antoinette uses my son and treat him like a dog. That is not my grandchildren. How will she know about anything that I did? I was around her 24 seven. When I wanted to rock her, I was going to pick our son up from work. That was it. Has Ronald told you that he loves Antoinette? Yes, he has. Okay, so why can't you just abide by that? Because Antoinette she do not love she Those kids don't look like your family. No, they don't. We have a hell of a gene. When it come family. out, you're going to kiss and all the How about that? I want to apologize to my kids. So it was time to meet Ronald, who was determined to prove that these were his kids. Where's your kids? Yes, both of them She doesn't think they're your kid. And that's why I'm here to prove who they are. In the case of one-year-old Dejeuner, Ronald, you are not. Oh, I love you. Oh. Oh. You're right, right. Oh, my God. So, so In the case of two-month-old Jordan, Ronald, you are not. Oh. Do this to me. Dale, See how you're not her. afraid of me. Don't I'm not jump jumping on not the God knows in heaven, I'm not jumping on you. You hurt me. You hurt my son. <laughs> now, that was shocking enough. Despite the results, Ronald claimed that he would stay with Antoinette and raise these kids regardless. <laughs> and we're happy to say he's kept his word. They are all one big happy family, guys. We wish you all a wonderful new year. Coming up next, the wildest reaction to a DNA test of the season. In 2010, there were thousands of outrageous stories. I came a long way to be with you. And a million moments of unforgettable drama. Oh! But who will be crowned the number one guest of 2010? Uh, what else? I need it. The incredible answer is coming up. Who will be crowned the number one guest in 2010? The incredible answer is coming up. John, you are not. The <laughs> that was a one and only. Never seen a reaction to a DNA test quite like that. 
But as for the woman, Callie, she tested another man, and she has found her son, Jordan's dad. All right. We are almost to the top of the countdown, coming in at number four. A woman named Jamie, who claimed her marriage with her husband, Adam, was picture perfect until he came home with herpes. But the real problem was she thought he was doing it with her best friend, Jenny. Whoa. Coming in at number four! Woo! I've been with my husband for four years. Six months ago, he came home with herpes. I believe that he cheated on me with Jenny. And I believe that he caught it from her. Why are you so convinced that your husband is cheating? He told me one time that he secretly met up with her. My wife thinks that I got herpes from her ex-best friend, Jenny. But I know in my heart that I have never been unfaithful. Have you had any uh, kind of sexual contact with Jenny? No. None? None. Where'd you get the STD? I wish I had an answer for her. And the only thing I... You shouldn't even be with my. Do you have an STD? Absolutely not. So, despite what Jamie suspected, Jenny and Adam claimed nothing was going on. Do you think Jenny is prettier than Jamie? No. You said no. That's a lie. Do you seek be with Jenny? You said no. That was a lie. During your relationship with Jamie, have you ever had any type of sexual contact with another woman? You said no. You are telling the truth. Thank you. Thank you very much. There you go, Jamie. Get the answers. <laughs> so after that appearance, Jenny threw a viewing party to watch the show that she was on. <laughs> Adam went to the party. And because of that, Jamie filed for divorce. But Jamie must add second thoughts because since then, Jamie got back together with her guy. Anyhow, moving on, number three on the countdown is a story that was truly touching. It involved a survivor of domestic abuse named Jessica who came here for a physical and a self-esteem makeover. And here to help us with this important transformation were three very special ladies, the celebrity Real Housewives. <laughs> ne yeah. Nene Leakes, Danielle Staub, Ramona Singer. Here they were. Coming in at number three! Ah! After years of physical and emotional abuse, Jessica came to us in need of a makeover. I need a makeover because for so long I felt it ugly and I felt it that I didn't belong. There was an abusive relationship. It scarred me inside and outside. I started to feel like I was nothing. I want to look at myself in the mirror and like what I see. Why don't you like yourself physically? I don't feel pretty. On hand to help Jessica with this total transformation were celebrity housewives Danielle Staub, Nene Leakes, and Ramona Singer, who all related deeply to Jessica's situation. I know what you're feeling, and you know what I would do? I'd look in the mirror four times a day, and i say, you know what? I'm a beautiful person. Believe it, believe it, believe it. We can give you a makeover today, but you have to do this yourself. We can't change what you're feeling on the inside. <laughs> So after the show, the Celebrity Housewives took our real housewife to the John Barrett Salon to be made over, and then it was time to reveal Jessica to her fiancé and to herself. <laughs> I know you haven't seen yourself. Oh, you haven't seen yourself? No. But, oh my but I can tell already you feel better. Take a look at the monitors. This is how you look. Oh my god. What do you think of yourself? 
I feel that um, I accomplished what I came here for. Wow. Jessica looked amazing, but was she able to keep up with the look? Watch. Hi, Maureen. As you can see, I kept my makeover, and I feel beautiful, and I owe it all to you and to the housewives. I feel that I fit in, and I hope that my story could inspire somebody one day like you guys inspire me. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, we have the final two on the countdown right after this. We'll be back. In 2010, there were thousands of outrageous stories. But who will be crowned the number one guest 2010? The incredible answer is coming up. Who will be crowned the number one guest 2010? The incredible answer is coming up. Coming in at number two, a heartbroken man named Corey. Two weeks before we met Corey, his life fell apart when he flipped open his girlfriend LaKendra's cell phone and discovered she was cheating on him with a man named Charles. And that Charles may have fathered Corey's five-month-old daughter, Aaliyah. Watch. Coming in at number two. The worst thing that a woman can do to a man <laughs> is lie to him about his child. When I saw those text messages from LaKendra to another man saying that he loved her, and he was possibly Aaliyah's dad. It broke me up. <laughs> Did she say she wants to be with you or with Charles? She said she wants to work it out with me, but Ashley speaks louder than words. What does Aaliyah mean to you? She means everything to me. She's my little girl. She's my daughter. When the secret came out that Charles could be my baby's father, I was upset. I was hurt because I didn't want Corey to find out that way. I'm scared that the results might say that Corey's not the father. Who do you think is the father? Corey. Who do you want to be with? I don't know. You don't know. So it was time to meet Charles and hear the results. Do you think you're the father of that little child? I don't know. Do you want to be the father? It wouldn't bother me if I... It wouldn't bother you? This man wants to be the father. This man tears up when he thinks of the possibility he's not the father. Corey, you are not. Charles, you are the father. So a few weeks later, we were all shocked when Corey returned with LaKendra. And, and she claimed she dumped Charles and was happy with Corey, but when we got in touch with Corey recently, that update had completely changed. Watch. More. I forgave LaKendra for everything last time I was on your show. I tried to make it work out with her to be a family, but once again, she has hurt me. She is now pregnant with twins and back with Charles. Hopefully, next year, you can help me find a good woman that'll treat me right. Keep your eyes open, Maury. Thank you, and have a happy new year. Thanks, Corey. You're a good man. We wish you a much happier 2011. We'll have number one when we come back. After In 2010, there were thousands of outrageous stories. <laughs> but who will be crowned the number one guest 2010? The incredible answer is next. Mark. Who will be crowned the number one guest 2010? The incredible answer is next. Today we've been counting down the top 10 Mari guests of 2010. We're about to reveal number one, but before we do, I want to take one final break in the countdown because, you know, we do a lot of shows about cheating spouses, and for some reason this year, 2010, it was kind of like the year of the evidence. Ta <laughs> ta take a look at this. 
You got the evidence. I got the evidence, Mark. In bag number one, this is a skimpy schoolgirl out there. Jason is addicted to his collection of oh. porn. Do you know this tramp has a nerve to show up with this red? Lingerie. I found these panties in my life. In bag number two. Uh oh. This is a skimpy lingerie. She bought a spatula two weeks ago. Juanita found a hotel pillow. <laughs> Truck actually cut a hole in his underwear. Easy access. You do it, sir. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Oh. They can't even fit on one cheek. <laughs> and I said the best one. One, two, three, six, seven. I'm not lying. That's what I tell you. All right. All right. Well, we want we want to end on a great note. It's time to reveal the number one guest of the 2010 season. Drum roll! <laughs> Our number one guest of the season is Marisol. <laughs> now, she has appeared on our show over nine years. She has given 16 DNA tests to five different kids. Wow. Coming in at number one. Five beautiful children, 16 DNA tests. It all began with a search for her daughter Shadiman's father. Not the father. Not all. Not the father. Not the father. Marisol put her search on hold for Shadiman's father and turned her attention to her son, Joshua. For her son Davion, the paternity test left Marisol with more painful questions than answers. Not, not the father. Not the father. Not the father. Although Marisol gave up her search for Davion's dad a year later, Marisol came back hoping she'd have better luck finding the father of her new baby, Anthony. The mystery man who could not be here is not Marisol. Joey, you are not the father. Yes. Marisol will do anything you want. Despite being disappointed over and over again, one year later, Marisol returned with Reggie, hoping this time she would finally gain closure. In the case of two-year-old Anthony, Reggie, you are the father. I'm glad to say, that we've been able to help you with this child. So we spoke to Marisol, and you're not going to believe this update. Hi, Maury. You can only imagine how happy I was to finally hear you, you say the, the words, you are the father. <laughs> Reggie has really stepped up, but Anthony's not the only person he's been there for. Marisol and I are together, and she is now six months pregnant. We won't be coming back for a DNA test this time. I know this one is mine. Maury, you made 2010 the best year of my life. Thank you. I hope you have a happy New Year's. Bye. Bye. Wow. Good for them. And all those kids now have Reggie as a father. We'll have more from the countdown right after this. Crown the number one guest for 2010. That's a countdown, everybody. We wish you all a happy, healthy 2011. Remember, party responsibly, don't drink and drive, and why don't we all count it down together? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3,
the drama on Mari. No one can hide from the results. This is a first for the Mari show. Four women. One man. Six kids. These four women claim that one man is the father of all six of their children. And one more woman is here, his current fiance. He got me in my this man's name is Smitty, and he's here because he wants DNA proof. Four women and six kids. You are the father. Is one man the father? Smitty, 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 Smitty. It might have been the most unexpected result of the year. Not the father. Today, Callie's back to test a second man. Will her search end today? Oh, I know I'm right. Scotty! Ah! In more paternity pandemonium, you have to see to believe. <laughs> Patricia admits she's not sure if the father of her baby is Anthony or Anthony's younger brother. I can't believe she slept with my brother. What I did was the biggest mistake of my life. I would never do anything like that again. Two DNA tests. Two brothers. Who's the father? Anthony Devon. Shocking, scandalous DNA results next. Everyone, this is Tanya. Welcome Tanya to the show. Everyone, this is Keisha. Welcome Keisha to the show. Everyone, this is Nitro. Welcome Nitro to the show. Everyone, this is Rain. Welcome, Rain. To the and with all of that, in all the years, this is a first for the Mari Show. Four women traveling a long way to confront one man as the father of their six kids. And that one man is Smitty. They are Positive that Smitty is the father of all six of their kids. Whoa. Not only that, they think Smitty has 30 kids out there. Whoa. These four women, Tanya, Keisha, Nitra, and Rain, believe that their six children belong to this one man named Smitty. My name is Tanya, and my son Juan is only six months old, but already Smitty hasn't stepped up to be the father that he should be. My name is Keisha, and I'm tired of Smitty being a part-time dad to my two beautiful daughters. Smitty, I know you think this is a joke, but when it comes all about my children, you're going to be a father today. My name is Nitra, and I know that Smitty is the father of my sons, Elijah and Jabril. I'm tired of Smitty telling people out here in the street that these kids is not his. My name's Ryan, and Smitty know damn well he's my son Farrakhan's father. Smitty's acting like a damn child when he should be taking care of my son. These women have bonded together with one goal in mind, to prove to Smitty that he is the father of all six children. Today, these results are going to prove one thing. Smitty, you, you are the father. father. not the whole story because we want to mention that Smitty is about to be married in one month to it's this real. woman named Dakota. Tanya, do you think that all these kids are his? For sure. We you're know. Sure? Yes, all these kids are his. Okay. Now, now your your son's name Juan, right? Yes. You, this is the youngest of the children up here today to be mm -hmm. tested, right? And, and how's he treat Juan? He's not even there like he said he would be there for my son. He just be like, I got to So you think he's sure. just you, you think he's just playing with this? He think it's a game about I don't, it's a I don't game. understand Smitty. There are like, no games when it comes right. to this. This yeah. is serious stuff. <laughs> Keisha, mm -hmm. you have Inshira and you have Destiny. Yes. Two little girls, right? Yes. Okay? Is he the father of those girls? He know it. He knows it. I want to go to Nietzsche. There's a special circumstance here with Nietzsche. She has two kids, two boys, Elijah and Jabril. Now, this is what Nietzsche does. See, of all these six kids, 
Nitra picks them up. Nitra takes them all together. Nitra is a play good mother together. for us today. If he don't do it, who else gonna do it? I want my kids to know who their brothers and sisters is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> How positive are you? I'm 100% sure that Smitty's my son, father. Really? <laughs> Dakota, you know the history of Smitty and these women. Why are you with him? I don't know nothing. I don't know nothing. I'm a turn Why are you man. with him? Because that's my man. I'm, I'm going to be with man. him. We getting married. If he was everybody man, if he was everybody man, Everybody. If he was everybody he man, he would be there with you I'm, and your kids. Wouldn't he be there with you and your kids? Well, with well guess what? We got to hear from Smitty. This is what he had to say. These four women is good liars. I got no reason to trust neither one of them. Starting with Tanya, baby, one, I left for a month, then she popped back up talking about she was pregnant by me. I really don't even think the baby looked like me. Keisha never even told me she was pregnant with Destiny. I don't doubt that Shira as much, but I know Keisha is a real good liar. As for Nitra, two boys, it'll really surprise me if Jabril turned out to be mine. And for as Elijah, for him to be my son, Nitra telling me I can't even sing. And finally, grandson Farrakhan, she never told me she was pregnant. She only told me she had a tumor in her stomach. I'm taking my life in a different direction right now. I'm getting married to my beautiful fiance, Dakota, next month. And we just really trying to put all this behind us. Find the father. Good luck in finding your baby daddy. Everyone, the man of the hour, Smitty. Talk to me, man. How many kids do you think you have? Well, I think I got more, probably yeah. five. Five. Yes. I know y'all liars, man. I don't see why y'all, you know what I mean, going Lying through this. Lying. Oh, y'all like Keisha, Nitra, Lorraine, y'all liars, man. That's lies, all I know. Why did I tell you I had a tumor in my stomach? Why? Because you said it wasn't no possible way. Why? Y'all sick of you calling me. Y'all sick of you calling me. All right. And then, and you lied. And you did you lie. You lied. Keisha. I you I had a tumor in my stomach. And I still don't want you to take care of my son. Can I talk, please? Can I talk? Can I talk? Let her talk. Did you tell me you were pregnant? I did you tell you ain't tell nobody you was pregnant? You five months pregnant, you, and you don't know. I didn't know you five months pregnant, pregnant and you ain't know. Who is five months pregnant? Who is five months pregnant and don't know it? Mark, Mark, slept slept with Keisha one time after I had my first daughter. Five months later, she pregnant. She told me she pregnant. That would worry any man out here. Any man out here. That would worry any man out here. Tell you, tell, let the truth be told. Okay. After I stopped talking to you, you call me back. How much you need to talk to me about something? You already know what it was, though. You already know what Tell you, tell you. Listen, okay, listen, 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 listen. But, Smitty, okay, now keep it real. So you don't, so you believe that he ain't your son. Now keep it real. You knew what you I was pregnant. I though, never knew you, nothing. Smitty. We sitting, we sitting right here talking. Okay. Tell you. No, okay, don't get on, don't on, get on man. TV up front. I don't be at your house with you, so I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. But don't front, because I come over there, I bring wine over there, Smitty, and okay, what do you say? Are you serious? Yes, over where? What are you talking about? He just lied. What is he talking about? We got the results, so we're going to get the results. Four women and six kids. Is one man the father? Smitty, 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 Smitty. Stay tuned. The results are coming up. Brandon did the unthinkable. He looked my daughter straight in her face and said, you are not my daughter. She's so mad she won't even look at him. But is he the father? Brandon. Shocking, scandalous DNA results next.
Everyone, this is Devin. Welcome, Devin, to the show. Now, count them for 10 years. Devin has loved a man named Brandon. So much so that she's put up with his battle with alcohol, his trouble with the law. But recently, something happened that even Devin could not tolerate. You see, Devin says that Brandon coldly looked her four-year-old daughter, Kaylee, in the face. And Brandon told this little girl, I'm not your father. <laughs> then, as soon as she heard that, Devin ended the 10-year relationship. <laughs> and she vowed to get a DNA test to prove that Brandon is Kaylee's father. Watch. Brandon is all I know, and I love him to death. I've given him my heart, and now it's broken. Then what hurts the most is he denies our daughter. He looked my daughter straight in her face and said, you are not my daughter. My little girl cried for hours. How could he do that if it wasn't for my mom? I don't know where me and Kaylee would be at. My father is supporting me and Kaylee when he should have been doing it. He needs to be her father. And what did he do? Did he look at her in the eye? He, he just, he was sitting in a chair and she was standing like right in front of him. And what did... And he said, you need to go find your dad down deep in Kentucky. <laughs> What'd your daughter do? She started crying. She cried for three hours. The whole way back to my house, she cried. Why don't my daddy love me? Why don't my daddy want me, mommy? What am I supposed to tell her? Now, your mother, you know, your mother has kind of been the father figure for her. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> Donna, is there a possibility that he's not the father? Hell no. Yeah. He's the donor, not the father. <laughs> this is what Brandon had to say. Watch this. Devin and Donna are a bunch of liars. I've heard from so many people that Devin's been cheating on me through this whole relationship. I don't think Kaylee's mine because she don't have my eyes, hair, or skin color. I believe the guy that Devin has been sneaking in and out of the house is the real father of Kaylee. He even has the same birthmark that Kaylee does. I cannot stand Devin's mother, Donna. She's the reason I don't go around Devin or Kaylee. All this woman does is cause trouble. I told Devin and Donna I would not sign Kaylee's birth certificate, so they forged my signature on it. Those two are nothing but a headache. I know that I'll be so much better better off when this test proves that I'm not the father of Kaylee. Here's Brandon, everybody. Welcome, Brandon. You don't want to look at him. You don't want to look at him. You loved him for 10 years. Mm -hmm. You told me you've loved him for 10 He's years. He's my heart. That, that is my heart. And but you I got can't your back. do it no more because he broke it. I can't. Brandon, you love her? Yeah, I love her. You do love her? I love her. I can't stand her mom. Her mom's always in our business. Sit down, you Brandon. You act like you're Shut better than me. I you am. You Shut ain't. Up. No, you're not. Oh, yes. You, 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 you need to shut up. You need to shut up. You need to back her up off. You need to back up. You need to shut up. You were just with me not too long ago. No, I was. You should shut up. Come on. You go to your mom all the time. You've been busy with me the whole time. Brandon. Brandon. Come on, man. Why aren't you the father of that pretty little girl? Yeah, why? She looks like the other guy that she was with before she. Brandon, why would you 
Why would you say that to that little girl? Do you see what she I tell me? Through? The same night we're arguing. That ain't your kid. Her mom told me on the phone when it I had my. It ain't your baby. It's my baby. Okay. Okay. Let me tell. Let me tell. Your mom takes care of your baby. You don't work. Your mom takes care of your baby. Your mom takes care of your baby. Your mom. You can't even get up out of bed to go look for a job. You stay up all night. Can't even get up in the morning to look for a job. Do you? Do you got a job? Do you got a job? If you're, if you're, and, and that's what the problem is. She's got you and you. Exactly you is I raise your kids because you ain't got. If you're proved to be the father, which he is, I want you to make me one promise. Yeah. You yeah. go and apologize to that little girl. Yeah. I will. When it comes to four-year-old Kaylee, Brandon, you are the father. I want you to grow up. No, I, I want you to grow up. I'm growing and be up. A man. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, so, I'm sober now. I I'm want so, you to grow I'm up. I'm trying, Devin. I'm I want trying. you to help I'm trying, me. Devin. I can't get along with your family. Your family denies they me. They have nothing it's to do with it. It's always in our it's business. It's about me. It's nothing to do with it. She has nothing She's to do with it. She's always in our business. It's me and you and her. Always in our business. It's so. time I've been dating you and your up. mom. Is not my baby. Josh says he's not the father of her baby. Josh's girlfriend says he's not the father of her baby. It's not none of his baby. Yes, it is. Why are you even here? But what will the DNA say? Josh. <laughs> Four women and six kids. Is one man the father? Stay tuned. The results are coming up. Shocking, scandalous DNA results next. Everyone, this is Alethea. Welcome, Alethea, to the show. Now, for the past four years, Alethea's rage has been directed at her ex-boyfriend, Josh, who she says completely denies her four and a half year old son, Josh Jordan. You see, Alethea says when her son was six weeks old, she called Josh to ask him to get some baby milk for him. She hung up the phone and then didn't hear from him for seven months. <laughs> then what Alethea says is shocking is that she claims that Josh has started to call Josh Jr. Hurtful names like Crybaby, Outcast, and what else does he call him? He calls my son. That idiot! That idiot calls my son a three year old little boy. What type of man calls a three year old child? I'm oh, sorry, Murray. But yeah, okay. All right. I, I got it. Do you see this? Yeah. Do you see this? This is Josh's girlfriend. I'm his new boo. You can have him. He's nothing to me. He's nothing. What you say? Nothing. What you say? Nothing. You can have him. That's what I said. He's nothing. He take care of me and mine, bro. That's good for you. It's your cow and your wife. Your kid, daddy. Let's hear about history here, okay, Alethea? <laughs> what happened when you told Josh that you were pregnant? He was excited. Was he there at the hospital? Yes, he was at the hospital. He named my son. Oh, he named your boy. son. I cried when he was born. Then he wrote you a letter, didn't he? Oh, my goodness. This man wrote me a letter talking about how my son was from his other kids. What they picked up my son. He like he's it. an outcast. He he's a like cry baby. It. What happened two weeks ago? Oh, my God. He came over to my house to see my son running around my house playing. Oh, daddy gonna do this, daddy gonna do that. Daddy never showed back up again. He promised my son he would. And my son sat on the couch crying. This is what Josh had to say. Do you Why? not mine. You can move. Alethea and I was never, ever in a relationship. 
We only slept together two times, so I don't know how this baby could possibly be mine. I didn't even know Alethea was having a baby until she was seven months pregnant. When I asked Alethea why she didn't tell me she was pregnant, she admitted that it could be between me and another guy. Alethea is trying to break up the relationship with me and my girlfriend, Akina. We both know that this baby is not Josh's. Alethea's son is a crybaby and an outcast. None of my kids want anything to do with him. Even they know he's not mine. That's why. Here he is, Josh. Welcome, Josh, everybody. <laughs> You no. are a stone. You missed me, right? I don't want you. You missed me, right? Yeah, in like another country. In like another country. Yeah, in clown. another country. Even she told me, Maury. I when, did. When, listen, Maury. When I, I came to her when she was I seven did. months pregnant, I came to her. I said, Alethea, why you didn't tell me that you was pregnant? She said, because I it's between you and another guy. And I wanted to lie. wait till the baby got here. Why you And you believe your own lie. And you believe your own lie. understand your doubts and everything else but why would you call a little child like a crybaby because every why time you listen hold child? on Maury, every why time would you cry a listen, child? Maury, when i would come to get her i mean get Pam. him and take him to interact so with my other kids he, he would cry he would whine I, if i raise my voice said him he sit down in the corner and, cry you? and all that because you. of you because of you It's your fault. It's your fault. It's your fault. It's your fault. I did. I did. I did. I did. Yeah, I did. I did. I did. I did. If this is your child, you're going to take care of this child. Yeah. Yeah. Nakina, is that baby his? This chick knows this is not none of her men's baby. When it comes to four and a half year old Joshua Jr., Josh, you are not. <laughs> You're going to get a father in your child's life? He got one. Good. Glad. Thank he you got very one. much. Thank okay. you, Murray. Thank you. It might have been the most unexpected result of the year. Not. <laughs> Today, Callie's back to test a second man. Will her search end today? Oh, I know I'm right. Scotty. Four women and six kids. Is one man the father? Stay tuned. The results are coming up. Shocking, scandalous DNA results next. Everyone, this is Callie. Welcome, Callie, back to the show. Three months ago, three months ago, Callie was here, received the shocking news that a man named John was not the father of her one-year-old son, Jordan. So today, Callie is back, and she says this time she is positive that this man, Scotty, is the father of her son. Take a look at this.
The last time I was on the show, I made a huge mistake. I was positive that John was the father of my one-year-old son, Jordan. Look at that kid, dude. Big ass ears and everything else. Come on, man. Ain't none of my family got blue eyes. I was shocked by the results. John, you are not. <laughs> I'm more determined than ever because I finally know the truth. Scotty is the only possibility that could be my baby's father. I didn't sleep with anyone else no matter what he says. He thinks I slept with his family members and everyone in the city. But I didn't and the paternity test will show him the truth. What? You're positive this time around, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Why didn't you try to test him the first time? He was nowhere to be found. Oh, I contacted his family, oh, you, oh, you everybody. Couldn't, find him. couldn't nobody find him. <laughs> nobody. Was there a time you all lived together? You yeah, and I lived with him three days after he met me. He asked me to move in with him. Told me he wanted me to have his baby. Yeah. This is what he had to say, okay? Watch. I'm the second guy that Callie's brought on this show to test for her son, Jordan. And I can guarantee you that I won't be the last. Khaled was not a one-night stand. She was more like a five-night stand. And we was never in a relationship. Jordan's birthday is on Christmas Day. And I slept with Callie in January. So when does it take 12 months to make a baby? She knows that I take care of my two kids. So I think that's the reason that she's trying to get me to take care of her kid. I'm tired of Callie blaming me for being the father of her baby. And when we find out that I'm not, I'm going to tell the world what a slut she is. Everybody welcome Scotty. Here's Scotty. Let's get this straight. You know her? For a little while. I thought I knew her. I thought I knew her. Right. What, when me and her was messing around, I thought she was an no, okay girl. Whatever. I come home from whatever. work one you day, she done made up some little reason in her head to leave. Tried as hard as you could to get my attention. Listen, Wanted man, to holler you don't me. talk, it's my turn Wanted to talk. To you, you don't, don't deserve yeah, to talk. It's my turn you don't to talk. deserve to talk. Within about two weeks, leave. she done slept with six different guys. Oh. Six. Okay. Okay. Six. She no, had sex sure with one of my buddies sure in front of the whole hotel room. Sure wasn't. Yeah. And, sure and wasn't. she said, and she said that she didn't have no, she didn't have no way to get a hold of me. I seen her two times at the store while she was pregnant and asked her. Uh, she no, said, no, I there's no way it could be you your at the kid. Store and you got on the phone running she your mouth. She told me there was no way that mama, kid could buddy. be mine. Does that kid look anything like When you me? were a kid, were you no. blind? Anything. No. <clears throat> okay. Because he looks like if he's my mine, family. If he's my mine, family. If the kid and was mine, I'd take care of him. You would take care of him. Does not mean he's she my know, choice. And, and listen, Marvie, she knows that. I take care of two kids. One of them's not biologically mine, but I named her, and I've been her daddy, and she knows that. That's why she's trying to get me there. Well, then we're going to find out, right? So we'll find out right now. Callie, what I've been waiting for. And I'm sure you're hoping that your, your search is over, all right? Oh, I know I'm right. If I'm his daddy, he'll have a good father. He will have a good father. But you father. don't think you're the father. He better. He better. In the case of one-year-old Jordan, Scotty, you are the father. Oh, yeah. Okay, have your search is over. But allow him to be a father. Oh, I right? will. But she Thank told you. me there was no possibility right. I was a father in the well, beginning. No, I didn't. Patricia admits she's not sure if the father of her baby is Anthony or Anthony's younger brother. I can't believe she went behind my back and slept with my brother. What I did was the biggest mistake in my life. I love my brother too much, but I would never do anything like that again. Two DNA tests, two brothers. Who's the father? Anthony, Devin. <laughs> Shocking, scandalous DNA results next. 
Everyone, this is Patricia. Welcome, Patricia, to the show. Now, Patricia is here to determine if this man, Anthony, or his younger brother, Devin, oh! is the father of his son, Nathan. Oh! Now, when Patricia was with Anthony, then Anthony moved to another state for work because he wanted to provide for a better life for his family. When, and while he was gone, he asked his brother, Devin, to move into his home and help Patricia in any way she needed. <laughs> what happened was they got together. Watch this. I made a mistake. I slept with Anthony's brother, and in that time, I got pregnant. And now I'm not sure which brother is the father of my son, Nathan. When I think of the fact of not knowing who his father is, it really hurts. And now Anthony is denying my oldest son, Caden. I was with Anthony for a couple of years, and we had Caden together. He decided he wanted to move for a job, and he wanted his brother to move in with me to help raise our child. I loved Anthony, but I fell in love with his brother, Devin. I feel terrible about what I did, but for my children's sake, I have to find out. Who do you think he looks like? That's Anthony on the left, Devin on the right. In my heart, I think he's Devin's. But to be honest, for my children's sake, you want it to be I Anthony. want him to be Anthony, as I already have a child with Anthony. Right. I don't want them to go through, oh, he's my brother, but yet he's my cousin. This is my uncle, but my brother, that's his dad. I'm, I'm really confused about that. I don't even want to go into that. I, I, I can't figure it out. <laughs> Anthony is now even doubting that he is Caden's father, right? Uh -huh. And you're upset about that. Two years later, because I was honest with him. So because now he's told questioning him about him. Devin. Yep. Now he's questioning the other child. Yep. First, this is what Anthony had to say. I left Patricia and my son to start a better life, and this is how she repaid me. I can't believe she went behind my back and slept with my brother. I couldn't have been betrayed worse by any two people in my life. I can't even be sure if my firstborn is mine because of what she's put me through. If they are my kids, then I will definitely do make a better effort to be a good father. They deserve love, and if I'm the father, you know, it's my duty to give them that. Everybody, here's Anthony. You don't want to be near her? No. Why not? really distance my emotions from her, and the most distance I can get is the best. Really? But your son deserves that? But your son deserves that? Does he? Those boys. He's two years old. And not only that, but he's autistic. You don't know how it is. You're not ever there. You don't raise him. You don't take care of him. You don't do anything for him. You but she left me. You never expected this to happen with Devin? No. He's the closest person to me in the whole world. When was the first time you realized your brother and Patricia were together? I, she told me two weeks after she left me. I mean, I lost, I got laid off from my job. Then two days later, it was like my birthday, and then <laughs> she left me two days after. I told you on your birthday? No, you, no, you told me about told two you. weeks after you left. Why don't you think you're the father of uh, Nathan? Well, Devin was having sex with Trisha the whole time that uh, I was in Texas. <laughs> what? I sent them money. Why, you know, don't, why don't you think you're the father of Caden? I don't know if I'm the father, because I don't know what she's capable of. I mean, she's going to do this behind my back. <laughs> you know. OK. Here's the other brother, Devin. Devin, come on out. Why don't you sit over here? Devin, she says she loves you. She says she loves you. You love her? No, not at no? all. No? You don't love her? Uh, uh, what I did was the biggest mistake of my life. I love my brother too much. He's the most important person to me in my life. I would never do anything like that again. How do you think this happened? My first intention was going to watch my nephew and help my brother out, and it ended up being one night 
she told me she's like, you know, you can come and sleep in uh, the room. There's nothing a room. There's nothing weird about it. <laughs> you know, these two kids could be either cousins or brothers. You know that. Yeah. Well, let's find out right now. <laughs> We're gonna talk about Caden first, mm -hmm. the two-year-old. When it comes to two-year-old Caden, Anthony, you are the father. When it comes to seven-month-old Nathan, she has a baby with Anthony. But does she also have a baby with his younger brother? Anthony, Devin. Four women and six kids. Is one man the father? Stay tuned. The results are coming up. Shocking, scandalous DNA results next. I made a mistake. I slept with Anthony's brother, and in that time, I got pregnant. And now I'm not sure which brother is the father of my son, Nathan. I loved Anthony, but I fell in love with his brother, Devin. I feel terrible about what I did. But for my children's sake, I have to find out. I left Patricia and my son to start a better life, and this is how she repaid me. I can't believe she went behind my back and slept with my brother. I couldn't have been betrayed worse by any two people in my life. You don't want to be near her? No. Why not? <laughs> I just really distance my emotions from her, and the most distance I can get is the best. Here's the other brother, Devin. Uh, what I did was the biggest mistake in my life. I love my brother too much. <laughs> I would never do anything like that again. You know these two kids could be either cousins or brothers. You know that. When it comes to seven-month-old Nathan, Devin, you are not the father. Oh, yes! Yes! Right. Bye. When it comes to seven-month-old Nathan, Anthony, you are the father. to turn it all around about being a dad here. Oh, all right? And hopefully this experience, this experience will allow you to be the father of both of those children. Definitely. Okay? Those are children. Those are not kids. Yes. Right? We'll be back right after this. Four women and six kids. Is one man the father? Smitty, 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 Smitty. <laughs> Don't go away. The DNA results are next. Shocking, scandalous DNA results next. My name is Taya, and my son Juan is only six months old, but already Smitty hasn't stepped up to be the father that he should be. My name is Keisha, and I'm tired of Smitty being a part-time dad to my two beautiful daughters. My name is Nitra, and I know that Smitty is the father of my sons Elijah and Jabril. My name's Ryan, and Smitty know damn well he's my son Farrakhan's father. Today, these results are going to prove one thing. Smitty, you, you are the father. These four women is good liars. I got no reason to trust neither one of them. I'm getting married to my beautiful fiance, Dakota, next month. And we just really trying to put all this behind us. If I ain't the father, good luck in finding your baby daddy. We're going to start with you, Tanya. When it comes to six-month-old Juan, Smitty, you are the father. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Comes to two-year-old <laughs> Destiny. Smitty, you are the father. <laughs> when it comes to three-year-old Inshira, Smitty, you are the father. <laughs> now with Nitra, when it comes to five-year-old Jabril, Smitty, you are the father. <laughs> when it comes to comes to six-year-old Elijah Smitty, you are the father. And finally, Rain, when it comes to Farrakhan Smitty, you are the father. Now he knows. 
And y'all better get together because they gonna be around me. Y'all better, he gonna be around me. They gonna be around me. They gonna be around me. Gonna be around me. Gonna be around me. No tests off limits, and the results are in. Mari. This hour, Mari has more men and more babies DNA tested than any show of the year. Two families divided by one baby. My son Tavares is not the father of Rachel's daughter. Like you Rachel, were uh, what the uh, hell? Uh, he got bought over for a blunt and some coffee. Oh, 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 she, oh, 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 she looked like every black man in Oregon. You're a sick yeah. one. And what Four family members at war. One shocking DNA result. Tavares. <laughs> Timothy totally denies Melissa's baby boy, but the resemblance is eerie. He don't look like me at all. He looks just like me. Is he the father? Timothy. <laughs> this teen got pregnant at 15 years old. I don't have no help at all. And she's here to prove that this 19-year-old is the father. Will this team find the father today? <laughs> Kenny knows his fiance cheated. <laughs> Kenny doesn't know if his fiance's daughter is his. He's in a lot of pain, isn't he? It's all my fault. The DNA test holds the key to their future. Kenny, plus two paternity secrets. Samira so and I, it might not be your <laughs> Will these two kids lose the only father they've ever known? <laughs> when I open the envelope, who will hear you are the father? This is Chantel. Now, sitting next to Chantel is her 19-year-old son, Tavares. Now, Chantel and Tavares say that there is a woman, Rachel, and her mother, Kelly, and they are trying to pin a baby on her son, Ooh. Tavares. See, Chantel. Chantel and Tavares believe that Rachel and Kelly are nothing but gold diggers. Uh -oh. They thirsty. They thirsty. They now, thirsty. Now they're use, uh, They apparently are using this one-year-old child, Kaya Lee, to squeeze money out of Chantel and Tavares's family because Chantel says her son has a promising future in the NBA. Chantel says she'll be damned if she lets Rachel and her mother Kelly that trap her son. What? I'm here today to prove to Rachel and her gold digging mama Kelly that my son Tavares is not the father of Rachel's daughter. She didn't even tell me I can be the father until after she had the baby. She told us herself that somebody else could be our baby's father. When the baby was four months old, Rachel said she was positive that my son is the father. She ain't nothing but a fat ass liar. Rachel, baby, knows that I'm not her father. That's why every time me and my family hold her, she cries. Kelly is nothing but a fake, phony, trollopin' tramp. Wow. Did you uh, feel this way from the get-go, from yes. day one? Yes, there was really Love no day one. Way. She just she popped up at my doorstep one day with a baby. No. Liar! Oh, yeah. Not even like that. She didn't even let us know she was pregnant. Maury, I'm pissed off. I'm pissed off to the highest pissivity that these <laughs> It ain't looking good. Look at them. Look at them. Look at them. They thirsty. They drawn up. They thirsty. Look at them. Hey, she came on Look just to get a DNA Look at her mama. herself. Hey, Look at her. her mama. She's garbage. She's gutter oh trash. <laughs> Tavares, I got to get this straight, okay? Did you know that she was pregnant? I didn't even know she was pregnant, Maury. Look, I, I called. I called her. I called her. I was like, hey, Rachel. I was like, Rachel. Uh, what the hell? I was like, hey, Rachel. She was like, no, I'm not even sure. By him, probably pregnant by you. 
And I'm like, what? You're probably pregnant by me. I had to call her up and like, well, uh, I heard from a relative that you was pregnant Did by you your Did you go to the hospital? I told her I was going to go to the hospital, but she never called. That was the father. I don't even know who the father is. She just, she got bought over for a blunt and some coffee. I want to show you this baby. I want to show you Tavares. You tell me if you think they look alike. Black man in Oregon. Oh, you're a sick yeah. woman. And when she comes hey, up look, to boy, be your son, I don't see no you don't think you all look alike in the eyes? No. Yes. Boris, you slept with her. Man. man, I was going for a minute, man. man. That was like my brother called. He man. was like, he was like, man, it's a go go. So I go go, and I went. You didn't go go. Everybody, look green. Come on. You think this is strictly about money? Maury, in the beginning, we was willing to accept her and her baby. But every time she came over, we she every needed something. Time. She oh, I need gas. You can't see the baby sell. unless you give me money. You can't do this unless you give me money. You're a liar. 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 You're a he what happens if you are the father? If I'm the father, I'm a man up and take he care of what I got to do. No, 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 Calm down here and get the facts out, okay? Let's do this. She's a Are you after money? Oh, She's a money. Oh, oh, money. Oh, money. Oh, oh, money. Oh, 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 no, I you did know not, she Maury. Does. Uh, you invited you us know. over to your house I after the baby was born. You said Get she looked just like him. Oh my God! Oh, she looked just like Tavares. Oh, That's what you said. You Why don't we just find out, Please all right? Your chest ache, if your chest ache, beautiful. Look at this baby. I don't what about that child? What about? You can have dealings with that child. I got four kids. I'm gonna be a grandma regardless. You ain't a good mother. You can't even be a mom. You're a good mother, but you're not a baby. You're not a baby. You're not a baby. Come on now, we wouldn't be on here if your daughter kept Kelly. When it comes. When it comes to one-year-old, Kaya Lee, Tavares, you are not Somebody to get in this child's life and exactly. be a father. Okay? I so happy. Okay, all right. Kelly. I am happy. Fine.
Angela is living every single mother's worst nightmare. He's on the verge of being homeless. But is this man the father? Don't shake your head. You know I'm not lying. You know I'm not lying. Come on, you know that's your baby. We're going to find out right now. Benjamin. <laughs> Timothy totally denies Melissa's baby boy, but the resemblance is eerie. He don't look like me at all. He looks just like me. Is he the father? Timothy. Plus, two paternity secrets. Samira so and I am my not Will these two kids lose the only father they've ever known? This hour, Mari has more men and more babies DNA tested than any show of the year. My next guest, Angela, sits here an emotionally distraught woman because the man she once loved, Benjamin, walked out of her life. <laughs> and now is denying her four-month-old son, Benjamin Jr. Angela struggles to take care of her baby. This baby was born premature. To make matters worse, she's on the verge of being homeless. Listen to this. Two months ago, when Benjamin turned his back on me and Benjamin Jr., I felt betrayed. I felt like somebody took a knife and stabbed me right in my heart and just started turning it and turning it. Benjamin begged me to have his baby. And when they found out that I was pregnant, he was so excited. He was actually talking about marriage. And now he's going to sit here and deny my son. The day that I gave birth to my son was the scariest day of my life because my son almost died. I, I almost died. He was six weeks premature. My baby was three pounds when he was born. Benjamin was there. He was right by my side holding my hand. And now he has the audacity to deny my son. I... So after going through all of that, having your child almost not live mm -hmm. and your life threatened, mm -hmm. he walked out. I walked out. He just turned his back on me and my son and didn't even look back. Your son is named Benjamin Jr. Yeah, that was his idea. He, he said he wasn't going to have it no other way. He said That's not that, what he says. No. He says, he says, he didn't want that child named. Oh, my gosh. Don't shake your head. You know I'm not lying. 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 You're a liar. 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 you I didn't have no money. I called him on the phone. I said, Ben, little Ben needs some diapers. He was like, okay, well, call his daddy and tell his daddy he needs some diapers. Oh! Click, and hung up on me. Hung the phone up on me. And you're about to be homeless. Yes. He knows my situation. He knows what happened when we broke Could up. Could he help? Before he... Did he help? Yeah. He did help. He was my only source of income. He knows my baby is premature. I can't work right now. I have to put my whole focus onto my baby. He was you. my only source of income. And once he walked out, he turned his back. He didn't even he look did. back. No money. Did not no. look back. Nothing Stop at all. Lying. Stop Nothing. Lying. Nothing. Nothing. Well, Stop this is lying. this is what Ben has lying. to say. A different story. Why? My baby, my baby, no. Thank God for the Morris show. Let me tell you about this girl who telling lies to the world about a pimp like me. Girl, you must be crazy. I'm a G. Every girl would love to have a baby by me. Please, please help her find her baby's dad. Damn, if you did, I would be so glad. Stop calling my phone, riding by my home. She got more miles than airplane tires. My baby, my baby, no. Thank God for the Morris show. All right, here's the poet, Benjamin. Here he is. <laughs> No, that's not my baby. Why not? <laughs> not my baby. Man. Look at the baby. Ben. Look. Did you want a child? No, I didn't want no kids ben, from look her. Look at me, Ben. How can I you sit there no and deny that? How can you sit there and deny him? Look at my baby, Why ben. would, why would that be? Ben. 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 
Why is that baby named Ben Jr. if you didn't want to? She's psycho. She's psycho, man. I don't know. She wants to stop me. She's stopping me. She wants to stop me. Man. You take care of my baby. Well, it's not my baby. Tell, tell the. Do tell you know baby that that baby, do you know how much trouble that baby had being born? That's was not my born. problem. That's not there. my problem. It's not your problem. Call his you daddy. Call one. his daddy. You were talking to Daywatch. Yeah, you, 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 you been in the streets. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's me, yeah. Oh that's God. me. Oh, I tell you something. Ben, these people, are, these people are on the verge of being homeless. If that's your child, you're going to take care of that baby, aren't you? If that's my child, yeah, more. But that I know that's your not child. my child. You know that's your child, man. Yeah. You, you we was living together when that baby was conceived. Man, you, 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 you know that. You know that. Find out right now. In the case of four-month-old Benjamin Jr., Benjamin, you are the father. care of this baby, all right? Ability to take care of this child. I can't be a boy. Right. I don't know how to be I'm a father. You right now, That's you've right. got to take care That's of this right. child. I don't know That's how to right. be a boy. You've been start by welcoming him into your life, yes, okay? All right? We'll go backstage. Thank you. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to do it. It was nice you didn't come home. It was nice that you stayed out late. Oh, I'm sorry, you know what I mean? And. I just wasn't ready for no no baby, but I'll be there for you and the baby, and I'll do whatever it takes to take care of little Ben. Timothy totally denies Melissa's baby boy, but the resemblance is eerie. He don't look like me at all. He looks just like me. Is he the father, Timothy? This teen got pregnant at 15 years old. I don't have no help with my daughter at all. And she's here to prove that this 19-year-old is the father. Will this teen find the father today? Plus, two paternity secrets. Samara and I, it might not be you. This hour, Mari has more men and more babies DNA tested than any show of the year. Everybody, welcome Melissa. Here's Melissa. There was a time in her life that Melissa loved and trusted a man named Timothy. In fact, in fact, for a year, Melissa says, they tried to have a baby. When the efforts failed to have a child, the relationship fell apart. Two months later, Melissa discovers she's pregnant. And she was hoping that Timothy would be part of her son's life. But today she is disappointed and furious because she says Timothy wants nothing to do with her or her nine-month-old son, Timothy Jr. You thought Timothy would be there, didn't you? He was there in the beginning. He was? He was there through the whole birth and all through the labor, he was there. He was there every step of the way. And then he didn't want nothing to do with them anymore. You just want him to care for I your... I want him to be there for his kid. For his child. Okay. Well, this is what Timothy had to say. Every relationship goes through problems, but you're never supposed to give up. Every time me and Melissa would fight, she would turn her back on me and date other guys. She's the one who gave up on her relationship, not me. Me and Melissa, we tried over a year to have a baby with no luck. I think it's suspicious a month after we broke up, she got pregnant. I gotta admit, this baby must have been made by magic. Not only were me and Melissa not intimate, but I had another girlfriend. Melissa, I know for a fact you're still in love with me. Newsflash, I don't feel the same way, so stop crying. Okay, here he is. 
Timothy, Timothy, come on out. He don't look like me. So, you was his daddy. He so? has your first and your last name, and you want nothing to do with him now? Timothy, is it right. because he doesn't look like you, or he don't look like me at all? We tried for a me. whole year to have a baby, whole year. Two months after we stopped trying, she gets pregnant. Okay, he don't look like you because he looks like me. Beautiful. <laughs> You sure? For sure. I have another girlfriend. I don't want nothing to do with it. Go be for her. I just want you to be for your son. What about that son. child? If that's my child, I take care of it, just like I do my other kids. I don't believe well, it. Well, first no, of all, you? though, there's one thing before you get to that. You got to prove that it's his. Yep. And here are the results. In the case of nine-month-old Timothy, Timothy, you are not the father. Uh, uh -huh. We'll be glad to help you find the father of Timothy. But it's not his child. His child. Guess what, Timothy? You're no longer in this story. <laughs> See you. You want to... Oh, You're not gonna apologize? No, I'm not gonna... sorry, I'm sorry. You got in it and you've got you gave him your name. I'll change it. <laughs> Everybody welcome Treasure. Treasure's 18 years old. But, but here's the deal. At 14. She met a fellow classmate named Izzy. They were, cl they were close friends. They even, you know, they competed together in the band and dance competitions. Uh, they modeled. They did all these things. But at 15, Treasure got pregnant. And now her two-year-old named Messiah. You're crying. You're crying. Why are you crying? It hurts so bad. I'm 18 years old, I have two kids. I don't have no help with my daughter at all. Messiah knows Izzy is, is her father? She knows, she yells for him like, we only live like down the street from each other. She yells like, dad, he looks at her and go in the house. That, now this is one of the strangest things I've ever heard somebody say in denying a child. Izzy says. Then she got shot and killed. <laughs> That she was the victim of a drive-by and was shot. That's what he, that's what you heard that he told his friends, right? Yeah, and I mean, like, when I was walking down the street, I happened to see him. And, like, the people that he was with was looking at me and then looking at her. And I'm like, what are they looking at, you know? And then come to find out that I was looking for the bullet hole. Because he told them that she was shot. Because he told them that she was shot just to be with another female, you know. That was a low blow for me. Well, this is what Izzy had to say. Watch. I can't believe a one night stand could cause so much drama in my life. Me and Treasure only slept together one time and we used protection. Not to mention the fact that she also told me that I wasn't the father of this baby herself. That baby could look like anyone if you ask me. I even know Treasure was messing around with my own family around the time she got pregnant. I'm trying to better myself. I'm going to college. I'm engaged. But all this drama right here is bringing me down. I can't believe it took for us to come all the way to the Morby show just to get some results. So Treasure, when this test come back and said, Izzy, you are not the father, I just want you to leave me alone and let me live my life. Why don't we want him next to you? You think they look alike? On this stage, the nose. Do y'all see that? And the forehead, the complexion, every damn death. Here's Izzy. Izzy, come on out. Nice.
understand? Oh, what of them, man? That little girl looked like you. No. Did you ever think that there was a possibility that that was your child? At one point in time, yeah. But when you, you start, when you, when you start, ain't nobody from you. Ain't nobody Shawty. Let him talk. Go it ahead, is Izzy. Is. No, she could be hype all she want. Fact it, of the matter is, yeah. like I said, when you sit there and tell somebody, oh, yeah, this is not your child, it's that third. When you tell somebody, yeah, this is your guy, child, it's that third. I looked at that little girl like this was my own. I still stepped up and was being a f for that little girl. Still being there for that little girl. But when you tell somebody that that's not your child, of course, I'm not going to Give me the one big is. reason why you don't fear the father. Because we use protection. I we see. use protection. Thank you. Thank you. That's well, guess what? We're going to find out right, right now. Yeah. In the case of two-year-old Messiah, Izzy, you are the father. Kenny knows his fiance cheated. <laughs> Kenny doesn't know if his fiance's daughter is his. He's in a lot of pain, isn't he? And it's all my fault. The DNA test holds the key to their future. Kenny, she's about to tell her husband two secrets. Samira and I are mine. <laughs> this hour, Mari has more men and more babies DNA tested than any show of the year. This is Keisha. Just over a year ago, Keisha made the biggest mistake of her life. She cheated on her boyfriend, Kenny. Oh. She was consumed with guilt. She kept the uh, betrayal a secret. Until, of course, when she got pregnant. Oh. Then, he came clean to Kenny. So he's known about it. So today, they're engaged to be married, but they're desperate to find out if Kenny is the father of their now three-month-old daughter, Aaliyah. Oh. Because both Keisha and Kenny know the DNA results could change their future forever. Watch. My fiance, Kenny, is my world. I'm terrified that he might not be the father of my daughter, Aaliyah. I destroyed everything when I cheated on Kenny at the time I became pregnant. Broke his heart and I regret it more than anything. I do think that Aaliyah resembles Kenny. Kenny is an amazing father and he loves her more than anything. It's been so hard, though, because we've been constantly arguing. I don't know what I'd do without him. I fear that he'll leave me if the test proves that he's not the father. He's in a lot of pain, isn't he? Yes, he really is. And it's all my fault. And what's he like with Aaliyah? He's a great father to her. He loves her very much. He'd do anything in the world for her. Do you really think that if this comes out wrong, he might leave you? Yes. I fear that every <laughs> might leave me. Did he say that? No, he's always told me we'd stay together, but I just feel like he'll leave me because she's not his. Well, last night we sat down with Kenny, and this is what he had to say. And I found out my fiance Keisha was pregnant. It's supposed to be a happy, stable life. But Keisha told me that. That she was cheating on me. I was just being heartbroken, and she's not mine. It breaks my heart that I can't trust her. Because I love her so much. If I find out I'm not the father, I don't think I can marry her. Everybody, here's Kenny. Kenny, come on out. <laughs> What's that little girl mean to you? Anything in my life. I'd do anything for her. What was it like, Kenny, when she told you that she had done this? It just tore me up. Could you believe it? I didn't believe it at first. 
So we might as well see what the answer is. When it comes to <clears throat> three-month-old Aaliyah, Kenny, you are the father. <laughs> and I'll tell you all this. Kenny, the past is the past, and the future is now. So congratulations to you. She's about to tell her husband two secrets that will rock his world. So my and I and my nephew. Don't do that! This was my baby, they might not be mine, Sophia! Will these two kids lose the only father they've ever known? This hour, Mari has more men and more babies DNA tested than any show of the year. Everybody. This is, this is Sophia, everybody. And obviously, Sophia's very, very upset. Because backstage in a secluded area is her husband, Kion. <laughs> See, they've been married for six years. They have two beautiful children. And in fact, without, without Kion, Sophia says she has nothing in this world. And that's why she sits here filled with pain and guilt. Take a look at how Kion feels about hearing a secret from his wife. Because Sophia has to confess not one, but two secrets that she's been keeping from Kion. Once or twice a week, I come home from work, I find my wife crying. I ask her what's going on. She don't want to tell me. I want to know. I need answers. I work hard to take care of my family. My two daughters, they changed my life for the better. You know, without them, I'll be nothing. But right now, I'm scared, because I know Sophia have a secret to tell me. And I just hope it don't end what we have. What's the first secret? My first secret is that I cheated on him throughout oh. my marriage. Oh. Throughout Throughout <laughs> With, um, my first daughter and my second daughter. What? Yes, Marie. Are you trying to tell me around the time where your first daughter was conceived, you were cheating? Yes. And around the time that your second daughter was conceived, I you were on cheating? Him. Yes. You have been married six years? For six years, I cheated on him. What kind of a dad is he? He's a very good dad. He's, he's there with them. The girls adore him. All right. Well, he's going to come out here. We don't know what his reaction is going to be. Okay. Everybody, welcome Kion. Here's Kion. Good to see you. Have a seat. Kion, hey, you have a great family. Two beautiful Sophia daughters. Te Sophia tells me you're a terrific dad. You love your, your daughters. Are you surprised that she said that she had a secret? Very surprised. I mean, you all been together a long time. Seven years. Okay, Sophia. This is not one secret. This is two secrets. My first secret is... I cheated on you. What's the other part of the, the secret? secret? The second. So my and I, it might not be your... DNA test. Yeah. We can give you a DNA test. You cheated on me. It was a mistake. That's not a mistake. It was a mistake. That don't just happen. I love you. I don't want to lose love you. Me. I don't want to lose you. You all I have. Don't touch me. Sorry. Don't touch me. Do I'm not sorry. Touch me. Do not touch me. <laughs>
touch me. I'm Guys, sorry. Don't touch me. No, Mari, no. I'm sorry. You don't have to rewind that because I don't believe she just told me that. Please forgive me. Nah. Please. You want to do the DNA test? We'll yeah. do the DNA test. I don't want you by me right now. Please. Please Sophia, forgive give him, me. Give him, Sophia, give him, give him some time, okay? Nah, dude. <laughs> Will these two kids lose the only father they've ever known? Stay tuned to find out. The answer is coming up. The rumors have completely torn their relationship apart. His friends told him that I've cheated on him, and that baby is not his. Will the DNA test bring this couple back together, or are the rumors true? Jeff. This hour, Mari has more men and more babies DNA tested than any show of the year. This is Catherine. Welcome, Catherine, please. <laughs> so six months ago, Catherine and her soulmate, Jeff, were engaged to be married. They were celebrating the birth of their now 11-month-old son, Evan. But now... Catherine's dreams of a happy future crashed and burned when she and Jeff broke up. And then Jeff starts to deny that he is Evan's father. Now, only the results of a DNA test can give this would-be family a second chance at happiness. Watch. I'm very desperate to prove to Jeff that Evan is his. My relationship is hanging by a thread. His friends told him that I've cheated on him three different times. People that are important to us are telling him that the baby is not his. His mom has been putting all these ideas in his head that Evan's not his. He's trying to break us up, and it's not fair. When Evan's sick, he doesn't even want to come over to help. It's like he doesn't even care anymore. I need Jeff in my life, and Evan needs a father. Did you plan to have this baby? Yes, we did, actually. Um, and we were so excited when he, I first found out. And he would admit that, right? Yes. That you planned to have this baby. Yes. You were going to be a family. Yes. And then what went wrong? I think it's part of his mother and it's part me. I mean, I, I did my wrong things, and but he's done his wrong things, too. So in other words, when I bring Jeff out here, I don't have to move this chair out of the way. No, you don't. You want to be next to him. Yeah. You want to hold his hand. Yeah. Oh. Here's Jeff. Jeff, come on out. Here he is. <laughs> Jeff, let's get some things straight. Were you all in love together? Yes, we were. We were very much in love. I thought I was spending the rest of my life with <laughs> What happened? Um, here's some rumors. See some text messages, and then... You have people give you pictures. It, it kind of, it changes a lot of things. It makes you think about some stuff. And then you second guess a lot of things. And it, you can change. If this is your child, will that maybe start the trust again? It'll, it'll change a lot. It would. It'll, it'll change a lot. So let's find out. Let's find out right now. When it comes to 11-month-old Evan, Jeff, you are the father. Yeah. We'll be back right after this. Yeah. So my name and I might not be <laughs> Will these two kids lose the only father they've ever known? The answer is next. This hour, Mari has more men and more babies DNA tested than any show of the year. Earlier, Sophia told her husband, Kion, two secrets that absolutely tore him apart. 
Pussy Marina in my appeal. father of his two children. Be sure to watch upcoming shows to find out the results of these incredibly important DNA tests. Until next time, America. Mm-hmm. <laughs>